Being your best is often tied to looking your best. Looking your best physically is often tied into your metaphorical net worth as a human. If you are not fit, in shape, or conforming to society's current standard of beauty, you may feel the pressure to alter your physical appearance. In 2008, the US weight loss market had an estimated net worth of $70 billion. At the end of 2018, Weight Watchers alone made $409.7 million. Every year, the market increases by about 3%. And with that increase comes more businesses offering more opportunities. Today, the market is valued at over $72 billion and grows with more products introduced every single year. And although there are some legitimate methods to lose weight, there are many, many more predatory tactics available on the market to make your money and deliver short-term results with long-term failure. While there are diet pills on the market that promise to cut fat and get you to your goal weight, but offer little to no knowledge of how to adjust your life after dieting, there are other companies that will try everything under the sun to find the newest gimmick to get you into their programs and use their exclusive products. A perfect example of this would be those Instagram detox teas, really just liquid laxatives, which can actually cause dehydration, put strain on your organs and brain, and prevent you from absorbing nutrients properly. But hey, you'll finally be able to shed those pounds, right? While I understand why these types of companies are popular and profitable, I already dislike a lot that goes on in the diet industry. I think a vast majority of the products sold are predatory and will hurt or hinder long-term growth. However, when you take one of these health and wellness companies and amp it up to the nth degree, and then add the fact in it's one of the largest MLMs in the world, then you know we found the subject for today's video. And oh boy, did we reel in ourselves a white whale. Before we dig into Herbalife and spilling the tea and shakes in this case, there is one hell of a disclaimer I have to put in front of this video. The first being that everything I say in this video does have a source for where I found that information. In all of my longer form scripted videos, you always know there's a paste bin link that will show you every source or video I use to create these videos. And the second is that Herbalife is a huge company. This is a company that makes an absolute buttload of money and has gotten large enough to force an image of legitimacy, even though it is deeply rooted in the problematic model of multi-level marketing, otherwise known as an MLM. Unlike other MLMs I have covered like LuLaRoe, which is essentially the company taking itself out, Herbalife is a lot more slick and therefore a lot more successful in the process of growing into the corporation it is today. That does not mean I don't have a plethora of information available for you to learn about what this company is and what it has been involved in. It just means that this is me putting together a video based on a wide variety of sources. I also want to emphasize that I do not condone anyone attacking those involved in the company. This video should be a learning piece with an exact scope and should be something you watch to enjoy or to use as a tool to educate your family, friends, or acquaintances on what they should spend their money on and what they choose to support when they buy Herbalife products. And just for the record, I dug up so much information on this company that I had to split this into two parts. So part two will be out in exactly a week. So just make sure you keep an eye out for that because this rabbit hole goes really, really deep. So with that out of the way, let Let's dig into today's subject matter from your favorite pyramid against pyramid schemes, and let's find out what Herbalife is hiding behind its weight loss shakes and promises of financial independence. Herbalife, or Herbalife Nutrition, very simply put, is a company that sells health and wellness products like shake mixes, multivitamins, concentrates, etc. On their website, I went to Women's Health to see what products they would have to offer nowadays. Let's say I'm a random consumer that is just getting started in my journey of becoming more healthy, right? I click on women's health, go through a few products, and I see they have these pills called women's choice. It doesn't tell you if it's a vitamin or a supplement right off the bat, just woman's choice. Under the overview, it says hormonal changes can challenge a woman's well-being. Woman's choice includes plant-derived ingredients that help women find their natural balance and enjoy life at any age. And they don't hide it. There's a big fat asterisk right next to the end of that product description, which leads to the following. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Right beneath it. Off to a running start with some tablets that haven't even been evaluated, but I digress. We'll have to come back to that later. On the product label, it says that it's developed with soy isoflavonies and chaseberry. 
Don't know what those is, so we'll have to look into that in a sec. Apparently, this concoction is meant to help with menopause or hormonal changes. They've also got other ingredients like calcium carbonate, cornstarch, stearic acid, silicon dioxide, just to name a few. But let's look at the supplemental facts that they've got on here, which I'm most intrigued by. Soy isoflavone, kudzu extract, and chasteberry extract. Apparently, these three things can help with hormone fluctuations. So what exactly are these ingredients? Soy isoflavones are nutrients that interact with estrogen receptors, so they do seem to have some benefit when it comes to menopause and have a history of being used for studying exactly that. And chasteberry, with its really odd name, was believed to promote chastity. In the Middle Ages, monks would supposedly take them to prevent any unholy urges they had going on. Kudzu, the last ingredient has been used in teas in China, but funnily enough, is known as the plant that ate the South here in the US because it became such an invasive species. Not really sure how that's supposed to help with menopause, but there's some debate about just how bad kudzu is in terms of its label as an invasive species, but again, I don't see anything about its properties being helpful or necessary in Herbalife's women's health bottle. Remember this for later, a little foreshadowing here about Herbalife putting in some strange weeds to their products trust me. So as far as the soy and berries go, this women's health tablet situation doesn't seem like it can't help anyone at all. There is some sort of credibility in those two ingredients, but nothing is approved by the FDA either. Plus, even in case studies with soy isoflavones and chase berries, they aren't even effective for everyone. Each woman is different, each body is different, our hormones are different, so Herbalife may just not work for some people while it does help others. My problem isn't with people wanting to find a natural wellness product that can honestly help them, but it's the company making these products, and yes, plenty of the products themselves, as we'll see later, that I do absolutely have a problem with. Herbalife seems so harmless on the outside, but as with so many MLMs, things are rarely as they appear to be. Before we start getting into deadly berries and eventually $1 billion bets that have been placed against this company, let's talk about where they started, shall we? Herbalife was founded in 1980 by Mark Hughes. Now, this wasn't some idea that he had transformed into an MLM over time. Hughes was familiar with and supported MLMs from the beginning of his career life. After dropping out of high school and getting into some legal problems for drug use, Hughes worked for many of them. One of the first ones he worked for when he was 19 years old was a diet pill company called Slender Now, which sounds a little creepy as if the Slenderman was out here selling weight loss products, but okay. They went under, so you'd think that would have led Hughes to stay away from the MLM business model, but apparently not. You'd also think he would have steered clear of this particular business venture because horrifyingly enough, Hughes's mother actually passed away the year prior from a mixture of prescription painkillers and over-the-counter weight loss pills. Hughes has recognized on multiple occasions that her relationship with dieting was far from healthy as well. My mom seemed to be always trying some kind of crazy diet. From the time I was young, she just tried anything she could to lose weight. And eventually she got so frustrated with the way that she looked and felt, uh, she started going to doctors to get help and they prescribed prescription diet pills to her. And uh, she kept taking these tablets and she did lose weight from this product, but uh, she became extremely addicted to it. Uh, it. Her health started to go downhill and it was a tremendous tragedy watching her year after year totally destroy her life. You can see this as Hughes trying to improve weight loss pills in honor of his mother, I guess. But what bothers me the most about this company's foundation is how Hughes seemed to use her death to promote his own product. When I was 18 years old, she died from a drug overdose. And it was a tremendous tragedy because my mom totally destroyed her entire life trying to lose 30 pounds. And you know, if there had been something like an Herbalife around where someone had had the guts back then to put on a button and taken a little bit of time to talk to her about the way she looked and the way she felt about herself, she probably would have got on the Herbalife products and she probably could have looked the way she wanted to look and feel the way that she wanted to feel and she'd probably be alive today. According to a magazine in 1999, Net Worth Marketing Lifestyles, Hughes transformed the tragedy into fuel for a higher purpose. He claimed his life's ambitions were to develop an organization that would put the kind of reliable information and safe, effective products his mother never had into the hands of millions. Hughes blamed his mother's death on diet pills alone. 
while her dieting concoction with prescription painkillers were the things that actually led to her death. The LA Times says that Joanne Hughes did die of an overdose. His mother died addicted to painkillers, not diet drugs. In other words, Hughes founded his company on a lie. Not surprising. A lot of MLMs might be shady, but this is really low. How does it honor your mom in any way to mislead people about her death? If anything, use it for awareness about the damage prescription painkillers can cause and how addicting they are. Otherwise, don't use it at all. This just especially bothered me because it's using fear tactics to promote a product. You're telling people that your mother died from having the wrong type of diet pill. It's natural to assume that someone who heard that and was new to diet pills might get a little bit more than paranoid. But Hughes flipped the truth to suit his needs and blamed diet pills so he'd look like a hero. If he said he wished she had better ways to be healthy, that's fine, I can't argue with that. But to leave out the prescription painkillers to imply that she died because she didn't have Herbalife is just messed up. The second red flag I came across were the initial claims. Hughes was only in his early 20s when he started Herbalife, so it's not as if we're talking about someone who has had years of experience in the medical field, especially not from someone that lived in a correctional facility for a lot of his teenage years either. I am not saying people cannot reform themselves and change their lives. He's unfit because he's inexperienced and founded a business on lies, not because of any time in a correctional facility as far as I'm concerned. The only credentials he could ever say he did have were his girlfriend former Miss Santa Monica and to later become his first wife, Kathy Whitning. She was pursuing a medical science degree, pursuing. She didn't even have one yet. My source doesn't say if she was in her first year or her last year, but either way, there is no PhD to back this stuff up. So we have a man lying about his mother's death and a woman that was pursuing a degree in medical sciences, but didn't get there quite yet. So what a great foundation. Hughes, according to the Telegraph magazine, sold almost the exact same concoction as the failed company Slender now, but with one change, herbs. To make it seem more natural, I suppose. He lost 16 pounds in two weeks. Then his grandmother lost 25 pounds in her first month using her grandson's brand new products. You might be thinking, wow, that's amazing, 25 pounds. It sounds unreal. Yes, yes it does. And that's because that amount of weight loss is not healthy. I've said it before in MLM videos over these shakes and weight loss claims about how you can shed a pound a day and it's not realistic. If you're losing that much weight, you're absolutely doing it in an unhealthy way. You have to be literally starving or cutting off limbs to be losing that much. Mayo Clinic and other reputable sources say one to two pounds per week is normal, healthy, and sustainable. The key word there being sustainable. Hughes apparently was losing a pound every other day and his grandmother, let me do some quick math here, 25 divided by 30, was losing 0.83 pounds a day, six pounds a week, so three to six times the healthy amount. And that's insane. Even if I believe that both of them lost that much, which I'm not sure they did, it's not healthy, period. Hughes's grandmother eventually became his first hunbot, telling her friends and spreading the word about Herbalife. And unfortunately, many people were desperate to believe her and the company's claims. In the early 1980s, people were reluctant to talk about dieting. Things weren't the way they are now with social media and Instagram influencers pushing new diet fads and a new fad coming out every single year. So when the Herbalife brand began to take off, it was huge. I'm talking about $2 million in their first year level of huge. A lot of companies lost a profit in their first year, but not so much with Herbalife. Hughes made the infamous slogan badges, lose weight now, ask me how. And that went well sort of viral by 80s standards. The conversations began, doors were opened and people openly began talking about weight loss. That in of itself isn't a bad thing, but it was Herbalife right there at the door to greet those people. Something else worth noting here as sort of a side is that Hughes himself said at Herbalife galas and events how he started small selling Herbalife from his truck and yet they're posting these kinds of profits in the first year. It's like trying to brag about humble beginnings and coming from nothing while selling a get rich quick scheme at the same time. Either Hughes wasn't selling Herbalife from his truck for very long 
and should cool it on the starting from nothing bit or those numbers are misleading. Fortunately, it wasn't long before complaints and allegations of false claims began to pour in. Now, I'm not going to get through all of them today because there is a lot, and I mean a lot. On Wikipedia, Herbalife actually has separate sections for all of their controversies. One being lawsuits, another being over liver failure, another about the business model. So for now, let's focus on these early day allegations when Hughes was still around. The first one came shortly after its founding in 1982. This one had to do with false claims about the products Hughes was selling as well as what was actually in them. Hughes was sued not only by the Food and Drug Administration, but also the California Attorney General's Office and the State Department of Health. Yeah, if you have those three going after you, it's not really a good look. Health experts and agencies not only said that Herbalife was going against labeling standards, but also relying too heavily on laxatives and caffeine. Yeah, you're definitely going to be losing a bit of weight if you're losing laxatives. Sounds pretty familiar with today's tummy flattening tea, am I right? Like, yes, you'll lose the weight, but you'll also be attached to your toilet indefinitely. So what was in these products, you might ask, aside from overpriced laxatives and coffee? One of them is in the pokeweed family, an invasive species of weed, another thing that sounds familiar. I guess Herbalife has been putting weeds in their products for a while now. This pokeweed, however, is actually poisonous. And yeah, you heard me correctly. Herbalife was knowingly putting poisonous plants in their products. On wildlife.org, it says extreme caution should be used if you're going to eat this. Apparently, there are ways of cooking it where it can be okay, using the young leaves and cooked berries. However, there's specific detailed directions for handling this plant alone. You don't exactly see that with most kitchen herbs because they can't kill you if you eat the wrong leaf. And no, I'm not exaggerating. There's a warning right beneath the berry information that says the following. Warning, poisonous parts, all parts, mainly the roots, shoots, leaves, and berries when fresh and in quantity, highly toxic, may be fatal if eaten. My point here is that with something this unstable, you should not be putting it into weight loss products. Another ingredient, and this is disgusting and I apologize, is linseed oil. Linseed oil's primary use was a laxative for circus elephants. No wonder people lost so much weight so fast. This wasn't just any laxative, but a laxative meant for elephants. I don't think I need to explain to you why that's pretty nasty that Herbalife was putting this in their products, but it just keeps getting better. A third ingredient found along with caffeine was ephedra, and ephedra as of 2004 has actually been banned from dietary supplements. In the 80s when Herbalife took off, of course, it wasn't, but in high quantities, ephedra can raise blood pressure and was attributed to cases of cardiac arrest at the time. Hughes was proved to be putting these people's lives in danger just to validate his product's claims and how Herbalife makes people have energy. Oh yeah, you'll get your heart racing, and for sure, you'll lose weight and have energy, but be at risk of heart attack and death. Just lose weight the healthy way, people. Diet and exercise, not starvation, laxatives, and poisonous berries that affect your heart. No way should any of this be worth it. And what was Hughes's reaction to this? He asked the senators while in court to fight these claims that if they were such experts on weight loss, why were they so fat? What a guy, what a guy. You don't have to be thin to know that elephant laxatives and poisonous berries have no place in weight loss products. Herbalife eventually settled with the courts and paid, in my opinion, a joke of a settlement for $850,000. They were a multi-million dollar company. Honestly, I wish they'd had to pay more, so it would have slowed them down just a bit, but Herbalife was rapidly growing. They altered two products and kept moving as if nothing ever happened. Inc., a business magazine, considered them the fastest growing private company in America in 1985. They were earning over $400 million annually and had only been around for five years. People wanted to lose weight and there just wasn't many options, at least not nearly as many weight loss products as there are nowadays. Success stories began to crawl out of the woodwork from the early distributors. A man stating he lost almost 300 pounds in seven months, a couple claiming they made a quarter of a million dollars in one year as sellers for the company and it kept going and going and going, but so did the complaints. 90 illnesses, 32 complaints of fraud, and Hughes referred to them as stories and attacks. 
No good business is going to take that many complaints and discredit them as nonsense. But in the face of all of this, Hughes put on rallies. Rallies where he walked off stage to music specifically composed to sound like the Rocky theme song. God complex much? Maybe. Hughes was rolling in adoration and money. Each Herbalife program cost $30 a month. If you account for inflation in 1980, that's like charging $95 today. $95 per person per month for the basic program is definitely not cheap. Many consumers would become distributors, receive a 25% discount, and then go on to push the product onto others. And so the vicious MLM cycle continues. In 1984, the FDA couldn't sit by and do nothing. They published their findings, simple facts, about the truth behind Herbalife in what they called the talk. It detailed the standard pyramid scheme sales tactics we see with these MLMs and what was in the products Herbalife sold. Herbalife themselves had stated that up to 25% of users will have adverse effects from Herbalife products, while the FDA found that the number was actually closer to 40%. In a study of over 400 Herbalife users, 40% of them complained about headaches, constipation, diarrhea, nausea, lightheadedness, and even palpitations. Apparently, no testing of the herbs of natural products themselves had ever been done, only tests of the Herbalife products themselves. And I don't know about you, but I have always thought that it's important to know if what you put in your product is actually safe, not just focus on the end result. Sure, this capsule may have seemed safe, but how can you say that it is when no long-term results have been tested or each individual ingredient? That's how you end up using poisonous berries. One woman even died some years later in the 90s of an ephedra-induced cardiac arrest from the Herbalife products, and another woman had to be resuscitated over four times after suffering a similar cardiac arrest. The Washington Post states, ephedra is almost identical chemically to methamphetamine. In one of the FDA case studies, a 44-year-old woman was kicked out of the hospital between grand mal seizures because doctors found amphetamines in her urine and accused her of being on drugs, the report said. Again, all thanks to Herbalife. Naturally, Herbalife responded to the accusations with concern, changed their ingredient list, removed ephedra completely, and apologized. Just kidding. Herbalife actually had the nerve to deny even being contacted by the FDA in the first place. By the late 90s, there were 39 deaths attributed to ephedra in particular, and Herbalife was still in complete and utter denial. Now, I do have to make it clear here that not all the ephedra deaths can be traced to Herbalife. Some were for companies like Next Nutrition, but all of these were the fault of diet companies and Herbalife was among them. These were fairly healthy people as well. One of them, a 29 year old soldier that had suffered a brain hemorrhage who, as his mother said, may never walk again. It's just ridiculous and infuriating to me that Herbalife would knowingly put lives at risk that way and not only have the nerve to peddle this as a great way to lose weight, but then deny the damage it causes. At least, at the very least, have the decency to admit when you've done wrong. They've even got the guts to put a little section on their website about how heart health is important. <laughs> Talk about adding insult to injury. There's no apology, no explanation, no, we had no idea we're going to try and do better from them. Not now, not back then. This is just a pattern in Herbalife's history, hurting people and then refusing to acknowledge it. Instead, they have a funny way of playing victim when they're confronted. I'll give more detail on this later, but I have no doubt that Herbalife's success today would be different if they were held accountable back then. It's pretty sad just how many people have legitimately died from these products and died without any justice for their families. This company bankrupts its distributors and like any other, and in new creative ways too, but they have killed people along the way. At the turn of the millennia, however, is when things changed for Herbalife. Hughes, its founder, died unexpectedly of an overdose. He'd had a toxic level of antidepressants in his system and passed away at 44 years old. His blood alcohol level was also 0.21, never a good idea to be drinking and taking that kind of medication at the same time. I do find it to be somewhat ironic how Hughes passed away given his business. At the very least, his death wasn't attributed to bad diet pills that were then used to promote another new product, as was the case with his mother. There's more I could talk about with Hughes, how he married four beauty queens and left behind an absolute financial mess of real estate debts and investments that took a decade for his son to figure out. 
but I'm not here to run a smear campaign against a specific individual, and honestly, I find what happened after his death to be just as, if not more, exciting. So in part two, we're going to continue to explore what happened to Herbalife after Hughes died. Michael O. Johnson replaced Hughes, once president of Walt Disney International, and oh boy is he quite a character. We've got billion dollar bets, documentaries, and accusations of liver disease to explore, and it only gets more convoluted and juicier from here, so stay tuned for part two. And that is where we will be ending today's video. Make sure to leave me your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. If you want even more content from me, make sure to check out my description box where you're going to find links to all of my social media, my second channel for my puppy Casper, and the Sad Milk Collaboration channel. Thank you all for making it to another one of these videos, part one of The Mess of Herbalife, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!